Hi, it's Sherry. Welcome back to my channel, Canterbury Cottage. Today I'll be making over the remaining items that I purchased from thrift stores on my recent trip to St. Louis. Based on the comments, people feel rather strongly about whether I should or should not paint the green canisters. And it did take me a while to make up my mind about what I wanted to do with them. And so I hope you'll stay tuned to see what my final decision was. And as always, make sure that you watch the last minute or two of the video if you want to see the final projects up close and staged in my home. Okay, well, let's get started. So these are the eight items I will be upcycling today. It turns out this box is for holding salt. Before I started to paint, I sanded off the floral design because it had some texture to it. I then cleaned it really well and applied two coats of green chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I distressed the edges using medium grit sandpaper. I printed out a vintage image of a seed packet and applied Mod Podge to the back. I then adhered it to the underside of the lid. Once the Mod Podge was dry, I distressed the label a bit with some sandpaper. As a final step, I applied clear wax to the entire box. I had some leftover label holders from a previous project. I attached one of the label holders to the front of the box using the small screws that came with it. Then I printed out the word seeds on some antique looking parchment paper that I had ordered from Amazon. I cut it to fit inside the label holder. This box could hold seed packets, but would also make a cute planter. When I bought this mail organizer, I knew that I wanted to turn it into a phone charging station, so I would need to drill some large holes in the back for the cords. I used a one inch spade drill bit. I then painted it with two coats of black chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I distressed the edges with medium grit sandpaper. I applied a coat of antique wax to add some depth to the black paint. I then sealed it with another coat of clear wax. I measured to determine the size of a decal that I wanted to make on my Cricut machine. I printed out a simple number one and number two on white vinyl. You could use stickers or a stencil if you don't have a Cricut machine. I'll be using this to store my phone and my earbuds. Before painting the magenta basket, I cleaned it as well as I could. I then used my favorite Zenser primer to make sure that none of the magenta color seeped through. I wanted to create a two-tone basket, so I went around the entire basket with painter's tape. I then taped a pl plastic bag over the bottom two-thirds. I also taped inside a bit to protect from overspray. To get full coverage across the top of the basket, I sprayed it right side up, upside down, and on its side. To make the basket a little more interesting, I hot glued on some fringe that I had left over from a different project. I also touched up the paint along the top edge to give it a cleaner look. I could have avoided this step if I had painted the bottom of the basket black instead. Ultimately, I decided to paint the green canisters to imitate the look of antique olive jars. Thanks to Eric and Michelle who mentioned the restoration hardware jars in the comments. I began by spraying the canisters with Rust-Oleum bonding primer because this primer tends to add a little texture. 
I then mixed together a variety of orange and brown acrylic and chalk paints to achieve a terracotta color that I liked. I applied two coats of this paint. I then created a lighter tone by adding more pumpkin chalk paint for the third coat. I dabbed this on in a pretty thick layer. For the fourth coat, I mixed together some white wax, salt, and a little white chalk paint. I painted this on the pots and then immediately wiped it off. To create an even crustier appearance, I dabbed on some additional white wax and poured the salt directly onto the pot and lightly dabbed it with a rag. When the wax was dry, I sprayed on a matte clear coat to adhere the salt further. When the top coat was dry, I wiped away the excess salt with a rag. I should have applied two coats of the top coat because most of the salt wiped off. Using an orbital sander, I sanded the lids down to the natural wood. Although my canisters are smaller, you can't beat the price. To enhance the bird print, I decided to add an additional frame. I tore off the paper backing, bent back the staples, and removed the cardboard print and glass. I tried to remove the bird print from the inner mat, but I tore the print in the process. So I went ahead and removed the brown innermost mat. I measured the remaining mat and printed out a new image on a sheet of cardstock. I painted the remaining mat with cashew chalk paint to conceal a small tear. I painted both frames with two coats of ivory chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I distressed the edges and detailing on both frames with sandpaper. I applied a coat of clear wax with a wax brush and wiped off the excess with a rag. I covered the cardboard from the larger frame with a piece of ivory burlap. I adhered it with spray adhesive. I returned the cardboard to the frame using the original staples to hold it in place. I centered the smaller frame inside the larger frame and made pencil marks on the burlap. Using hot glue, I attached the smaller frame to the burlap in the larger frame. I shot some staples in the back to make sure that it held in place. I used some paper tape on the back to make sure the cardboard stayed in place. Then I cut out a piece of craft paper to cover the back. I adhered it to the frame with craft bond glue stick. Although it wasn't necessary, I used another layer of paper tape to clean up the edges. Finally, I reattached the sawtooth hanger. I also went over the bird image with a coat of Mod Podge. I liked the shape of this red jug, but I did not like the color, and so I thought this would be a good time to try out Rust-Oleum's cement spray paint. After applying three coats, I wasn't crazy about the solid color of the vase, and so I decided to distress it with some medium grit sandpaper. To add further dimension, I applied a coat of white wax, just lightly dabbing away the excess. Although the color is interesting, I don't think it looks like cement. Although originally I wasn't going to do anything with this rustic basket, I decided that it might look nice if I painted on some words. So I created a stencil out of some old vinyl that I would have otherwise thrown away. It was necessary to cut some slits in the vinyl to help it curve around the basket's shape. I then dabbed on some black chalk paint. I only used one coat because I wanted a rustic look. 
due to the basket's very irregular shape, it was necessary to touch up the paint a bit. Once the touch-ups were dry, I went over it with some fine grit sandpaper so that the letters looked like they had been there for a long time. I hadn't planned on doing anything with the little green stool, but I decoupaged the top and then I didn't like it. And so I found this house-shaped box in my stash and screwed it to the top of the stool. Like with the basket, I wanted to put words on the side, and so I created a stencil on my Cricut. I applied two coats of Waverly chalk paint in Fawn. I removed the stencil when the paint was just barely dry. I went looking for something else to add to this rather plain box and found this leaf patterned knob which I attached. I then painted two old paint cans with white chalk paint and put them in the box to hold plants. Thanks so much for watching today. I'd love to know which project was your favorite, and I'd love to know whether you think that I made the right decision in painting the green canisters or not. Well, that's all for today. Until next Tuesday, bye-bye for now.